One of the most basic and fundamental truths in the Bible is regarding the nature of sin. Sin is the problem that required a savior. It is so evil that it actually took the death of the Son of God himself to save us. Just what is sin? How does the Bible reveal to us the depth of this problem? What is the proper definition of sin? And how does that impact our practical walk with Jesus? These are some of the questions that we'll be discussing today. Hi everyone and welcome to Prove All Things. I'm Nader Mansour and today we're answering a basic but important Bible question. What is sin? The Bible does not sugarcoat the answer or lead us to believe that sin is anything less than an insidious and persistent evil. One famous verse that defines sin for us is 1 John 3, 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. While the first part of the verse indicates that sin is a committed act against the law of God, the rest of the verse reveals the depth of the sin problem and why these committed acts happen. Here it is from another translation. Everyone that doeth sin doeth also lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. The committed sin is actually caused by something. That's in the next part of the verse which tells us that sin is lawlessness. What does the word lawlessness actually mean? It comes from the Greek word anomia, and this is the lexicon meaning for it. 1. Properly the condition of one without law, either because ignorant of it or because violating it. 2. Contempt and violation of the law, iniquity, wickedness. The first part of the definition leads to the second part. The two are related. One is the root, the other is the fruit. One who is in a lawless condition produces lawless actions. You see, for fallen humanity, the sin problem is not just when we choose to break the law, that's when we become guilty. But the sin problem actually applies to the very condition of our heart. Being lawless means a condition of without law. We are a law unto ourselves, or in other words, we are selfish. It's not just selfish actions that are contrary to the law. Sin is selfishness itself. Not only in Greek, but even in English, these words are not limited to an action. They actually refer to a condition or state of being. Notice how lawlessness is defined in Webster's Dictionary. Lawlessness, the quality or state of being unrestrained by law, disorder. Now notice how selfishness is also defined. Selfishness, the quality or state of being selfish, lack of consideration for other people. So it is little wonder that sin in its true and full definition is a state and condition of being without law. It's being out of harmony with God's righteousness. And as such, it is predictably going to manifest itself in choices and actions contrary to God's law. This is how the Bible defines sin for us. Sometimes people use some rather colorful language to condemn that first part of the definition of sin. For some reason, they don't like to consider the full meaning of sin, but prefer to limit sin to only choices and actions. This results in an incomplete understanding of sin. A limited view of sin will result in a limited view and appreciation of the Savior from sin. The Savior actually understood and clearly taught these two aspects of the definition of sin. Jesus talked about sin as a choice to do something wrong, when he referred to them which do iniquity in Matthew 14, verse 41. Again, in chapter 23, verse 28, he talked about sin as an internal condition of the heart when he rebuked the Pharisees for being full of hypocrisy and iniquity within. By the way, the highlighted words in these verses are all the same Greek word, anomia or lawlessness. These two aspects of sin are what makes up the definition of sin we saw in our first verse. So even Jesus recognized that there is a committed lawlessness and there is an internal lawlessness. This is the condition of the heart and mind. It is a carnal, selfish mind. That's how deep the sin problem reaches. At this point, someone will ask, well, what about Ellen White? Naturally, Ellen White can only be in harmony with the biblical evidence we are finding. Some people think that Ellen White taught that sin is only a choice to break the law. They like to quote her statements that the only definition of sin is the transgression of the law. They limit the meaning of her words to suit their chosen 
partial definition of sin? Does Ellen White recognize the full meaning of sin or just the partial definition as many claim? She actually tells us pretty clearly. Our only definition of sin is that given in the word of God. It is the transgression of the law. It is the outworking of a principle at war with the great law of love, which is the foundation of the divine government. Transgression of the law is an outworking of a principle opposed to God. It is this principle that we discovered already in the Bible. It is the lawless and selfish condition of man's heart. This principle of sin manifests its presence in lawless deeds. So Ellen White understood it. Here is more. The only definition we find in the Bible for sin is that sin is the transgression of the law. The Word of God declares, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Many are deceived concerning the condition of their hearts. They do not realize that the natural heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Once again, Sin here extends to the very condition of the natural heart. It is a deceitful heart infected with the disease of sin. In such a heart, the principle which is at war with God's government reigns and rules. That's why lawlessness is defined in the Bible as the condition of without law. That condition of the natural heart is sin according to Ellen White. Sin is a mortal disease. Yet this aspect of sin is often not just ignored but actively opposed. Why is that? Because few believe that humanity has sunk so low as it has or that it is so thoroughly bad, so desperately opposed to God as it is. Not only that, but as we just read before, many are deceived concerning the condition of their hearts. And it is this natural heart that refuses to see sin for what it truly is, but will limit the definition of sin in such a way as to make it seem less evil. It's the natural heart that insists that sin is only an action or a choice to break the law. In this way, the inherent sin of the heart is covered and hidden. The natural heart insists that sin cannot be a condition, thereby denying its own state and convincing itself that it is without sin. Beware of that natural heart. It will deceive you every time. Let God's word shine a light on it and you will find sin right there before you even choose to commit a wrong act. Jesus diagnosed it well. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. The amazing thing about this subject is this. The more you argue against it, the more you prove the truthfulness of it. Limiting sin to your narrow definition of it only shows that you're ignoring the facts and evidence. The very animosity of people towards the depth of sin shows how deceitful and far-reaching it really is. You're actively seeking to make sin less sinful. Beware lest you fool yourself and others with you. Beware because it is Satan's constant effort to misrepresent the character of God, the nature of sin and the real issues at stake in the great controversy. The nature of sin is misrepresented when it is made to appear less sinful, when it is only defined partially and incompletely. This is Satan's constant effort. After all, those who do not realize the sinfulness of sin are not able to appreciate the value of the atonement and the necessity of being cleansed from all sin. Simply put, God says sin is this big, but Satan says no, it's only this small. Make no mistake about it, as big as sin is, there is complete and full victory over it. After all, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Honestly, which view of sin will expand your appreciation of God's grace? The limited view or the complete biblical view? It is Satan's effort to hide sin by promoting only a partial definition of it. How does Satan confuse us about sin? By telling us there is more to it or less to it. Think about it but not with your natural heart. So these are the two views. On the one hand, some say that sin is only a choice to break the law and nothing else. This limited view of sin will result in a limited righteousness, our choice to keep the law, and a limited gospel, salvation by imitation, and a limited savior, one who is without helping you save yourself, 
and a limited experience, a works program that doesn't work. The entire focus is on doing. If you start with a partial view of sin, everything else will only be partially understood. On the other hand, the Bible shows that sin is a condition and a choice, which means that righteousness is right being first before right doing. And the gospel is about transformation and a savior within who is our life and righteousness and an overcoming experience better than you imagine or dream. The entire focus is on being in Christ, being one spirit with the Lord Jesus. Don't let your fears and natural desire for control prevent you from surrendering your heart to Christ. He is able to give you a new heart and liberate you from sin at the deepest level. In summary, one view says that sin is only a choice to break the law and nothing more. While the Bible view is that sin is much more than just action or behavior, it extends to the very condition of our mind and heart. That's what God seeks to transform. Through our brief study today, we find very compelling evidence that sin is indeed a far-reaching evil. Don't take anyone's word for it, but let God's word diagnose our malady truly. Study for yourself, and as you study, remember to prove all things and hold fast that which is good.